Hello dear friends, this is the Medium Harvest, Chapter 15, Three Attitudes. The Medium's book is the reference for the book psychographed by Chico, authored by Emmanuel. In the Medium's book there is a chapter, Chapter 20th, which is quite interesting. It's about the moral influence of the medium. And it's interesting because I was just talking to my friend here about the influence of our moral life, moral decisions into the works of mediumship. And Kardec dedicates a whole chapter in that regard. So it's very interesting for us to meditate upon it and Spiritism brings to us a view that is very encouraging, very inspiring. They don't want to bash us because we are not there yet, but they are saying, work on it. Make sure that you don't lose sight of it because it's vital, it's important. And this is where we are today. Three attitudes. They were studying question, um, the question and answer in item 226, sub-item 11 of the medium's book, when Kardec asks about the conditions for the, the connections with the superior spirits. And they say, the mediums should desire only what is good and avoid selfishness and pride. So selfishness and pride are the stumbling blocks for progress in general. And it's funny because we're living in a society that people are proud of selfish actions. Let me share a selfish action here. If you go to the beach and you take a picture of you relaxing is that selfish or not? No, it's not. If you take a picture, no. But if you publish the picture to your network, is it selfish or not? Let's do a short quiz because sometimes we think selfishness is foreign to us. Like, no, I'm not selfish. So let's talk about social media since we are using social media for it, okay? Let's say I take a picture at a resort and I feel like, you know, sharing that I'm there relaxing or I'm uh, in a party enjoying or in a restaurant enjoying, not because I am doing something that is useful to all, but just good for me. And I'm sharing with the whole network of mine, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Is it selfish? Yes, it is. Because, and proud, because you're telling, see how good I am. See, I'm, I'm not saying, judging anybody, I'm just saying in general. Because there are intentions and intentions. But we can't forget that if I am publishing it to show that I'm having a good life, that's called pride. Oh, your life is that good. Yes, my life is great today. And then I spend 364 days miserable because I'm not doing that. So that's selfish. It's good for me. I don't care if the people who are looking at my network are not enjoying the same. Good point. What is other type of selfishness? That I, at home, I decide that I'm hungry and I have a family. I open the refrigerator, fix a meal for me, and I don't fix a meal for everybody. That's selfish. No, but I am hungry. But do you, have you asked if other people are hungry? Little things that we allow ourselves to do 
and we think it's okay, but at the end of the day, it's selfish. Or, for example, I count on the charity of others spending their time helping others, but then when it's my turn to forget a little bit about myself to help others, I am like, ah, oh, no, it's too much. No, I want to relax. No, I, I want to use that that day for myself and for my family, etc. So little things that we think are okay and according to the teachings of the spirits, they are really negative qualities. Let's, let's read what Emmanuel says. He says, Three Attitudes, Chapter 15. Meeting, February 22, 1960. It's a dissertation based on item 226 of item 11. Given that selfishness and pride are negative qualities in the mediumistic personality, darkening the words from the severe spheres, spheres, and that virtuousness is the unalienable condition under which an edifying message can be transmitted untainted let us exa examine three attitudes in a few scenes and circumstances of life. In society, selfishness does what it wants. Pride does as it likes. Virtuousness does what it can beyond its own obligations. At work, Selfishness exploits what it finds. Pride oppresses whomever it sees. Virtuousness is incessantly productive. In a team, selfishness attracts to itself. Pride thinks of itself. Virtuousness serves everyone. In friendship, selfishness uses situations, pride, claims, privileges. Virtuousness renounces its own interest. In faith, selfishness pretends, pride complains, virtuousness listens. In responsibility, selfishness flees, pride tyrannizes, virtuousness collaborates. In the pain of others, selfishness forgets, pride condemns, virtuousness supports. In study, selfishness pretends to know. Pride doesn't care to know. Virtuousness always learns in order to do what is best. Mediums. The orientation of spiritism is always clear. Selfishness and pride are two dark corridors, calling us everywhere to vice and delinquency in painful obsessive processes. Only virtuousness can faithfully filter divine inspiration. And in order to do so, it is indispensable to not only admire virtues or proclaim them, but above all, to want to be virtuous and practice it with every beat of strength in our hearts. Fascinating because Emmanuel makes us feel the scripture. If Kardec only brought us only, quote unquote, it's like a seed, it's like concentrated information, the teachings of the Spirit asking to his question, what are the conditions to attract good spirits? To desire only the good, but not only the good for you. Oh, Vanessa, I have to work. 
oh, I have to study. Oh, my family. Yeah, but what about other people's families? What about their work that we should help out? What about their things as well? Why should I only occupy myself with myself? And Mentor Joseph constantly reminds us, he says, think of the future society. There'll be a day in which it's going to be history that people claimed that they needed to spend the whole day taking care of their business because their business is going to be somebody else's business. They're going to take care of people like the superior spirits. Their lives are to care for others. Of course, right now we can't do it because in this state of things, we need to work ourselves. We need to care for ourselves, but not only. We already can help others. We already can spend daily some time to reach out to others. It's going to be history on the earth. Those selfish movements of the soul. So he goes back. Pride and selfishness are negative qualities, especially to the mediums. And virtues are the inevitable condition to receive messages and not paint with our own colors because we will be receiving those messages from the spirits but they're gonna have our mix of the color of what we're experiencing so we need to be careful so he says in society the selfish person only does what he or she wants so it's the search for pleasure, the search for self-fulfillment. I will do something if it's pleasurable to me. No. So that's one of the things we need to change in our parenting approach. Because only when we change the new generation, then society is going to change. For example... As parents, I know many parents who are so um, concerned about pleasing their children. And they are afraid of, what if my child doesn't like? What if... And then one day, the mentors told me regarding Virginia, Vanessa, she needs to learn from the get-go that there are things we need to do in spite of the fact we may not like them. So it's good when they skip a play date to go to a trip because the parents need to work, because the parents need to help other people. Instead of the play date, they are helping the homeless. Oh, but I don't want to go, mom. I understand. But you will find the pleasure in, a, in doing these things. You will see that you're not here to have pleasure. Nobody was reincarnated to fulfill their need for pleasure. So why did God create the taste of pleasure? Why? To give some sweetness to life. But it is on us to associate pleasant situations with duties to be fulfilled. So this is our homework in the next 24 hours. Let us see if we can challenge ourselves to find pleasant feelings in duties that we have not yet found that pleasure. Only so we will be able to advance. Because often people do not fulfill the tasks in their life because they don't like to do it. They don't want to do it. Another concept that we were 
also learning today is that often we don't fulfill our obligations because we have free will and we don't make wise decisions. So the wisest thing we can teach our children is you're free to choose, make a wise choice. Can I do this, man? I said, you can, but the question is, should you do it? What if, for example, eating sugar, sweets, can I eat, mom? Yes. Should you eat them? We need to talk to them from the get-go. If you eat, what are you doing to your body? Is it good for you? Eat it. Now observe your body. See how you're behaving after eating so much sugar. You become a scientist and you teach your child to be their own scientist in their own lives. Ah, Vanessa, that's too much. That's the spiritist concept. We empower their discernment. We empower their discernment. Pride does as it likes. Ah, oh, no, I don't want to go there. No, but we need you. Ah, but I don't like it. I don't. Pride. Virtues in society. Virtuousness does what it can beyond its own obligations. Oh, but somebody needs us. Well, oh, but it's still complicated. Oh my gosh, I have, I don't even know how we're going to do it. Well, we have to do it. We'll figure it out. We have to go above and beyond the call of duty to fulfill it. Virtue. We're learning. You have a coach. I have a coach. The super coach, the supervisor of, all, of it all, Jesus. And each one of us has coaches that are constantly teaching us these virtues. And then Emmanuel says, selfishness at work exploits what it finds. So these are the selfishness at work, like the people who go and like, mm, I'm going to that meeting. Because that meaning I'm going to find this person. And then, of course, if I find this person, I talk to her. Then I'm going to get a promotion. It's always about me, me, me. Me, my, mind, Me, my, mind. But, Vanessa, if I don't do this, I'm never going to go anywhere. Yeah, in this reincarnation. But in immortality, you're really going nowhere if you do this way. Then you're stagnated. You're fighting for the bone to eat today. But you won't have it for the rest of immortality. No, but do I need to shake hands? You need to be sincere. Wouldn't you like that your colleagues talk to you out of sincerity? Or your employees or your employers that they approach you because they want to talk to you? out of true interest in you. Ah, Vanessa, but that's utopia. No, 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 that's called happy workspace in evolved planets. Ah, but one day we're going to get there. But how are we going to get there if we don't change it now? Somebody must start it. Chico Xavier did it. We know that he used to go to work, and I remember visiting Peter Leopoldo, and I met personally one of the people who were 90 plus years old. They were younger than Chico, but they worked with him. They were able to work, and they said, you know, Chico had this quality of being interested in us. He wanted to help us. Like, for example, he saw that we were making a mistake, you know, because they were uh, waiting milk and they, we were making a mistake and he used to say, you know, you better not do this because at the end of the day, what you are, you know, this type of corruption is going to kill your conscience. 
So he really cared. And how many of us are like Pontius Pilate? I don't care. I'm not going to do anything. Who am I to interfere? And these are brothers and sisters of ours. Our boss, our colleagues, our students, our workers, our employees, our employers. And he says, pride oppresses whomever it sees at work. It's classic. People have that certain power and they use it to oppress. We're still working on changing it. It happens at home. It happens in our neighborhood. It happens everywhere. Virtuousness at work will produce incessantly. Serve, service, serve. In the team, selfishness attracts to itself. Pride thinks of itself. Virtuousness serves everyone. So you are working, empowering everyone, saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. When we are selfish or proud, it's only like, no. Uh, these people are going to do it. And then I only think. So that's why the more selfish, the more proud, the less we're able to work in a team. Right? Friendship. Selfishness uses situations and pride claims privileges. Because, you know, oh, I'm friend with this person. How often we talk about jealousy and envy because it's not me there because that person is not with me but how come this person is with me and not so that sense of selfishness and pride we're talking about and in friendship virtuousness renounces its own interest so we want to see people mingling we want to see them together as long as it's not detrimental to them. In faith, selfishness pretends the hypocrisy of the Pharisees because they thought they are the only ones who deserved the contact with God. And pride complains. So pride complains in faith what does that mean I think of myself as so above that I say God how come this is happening to me and God is saying why not you if you're also being educated and pain comes to make you readjust pain is a byproduct of our perception we are going to change the suffering when we change the meaning of people, circumstances in life. And then they are no longer painful because my brain does not decode it as suffering. It decodes it as an opportunity to progress. So when I am thinking that I deserve better pride. I, in faith, said to God, how come you're doing this to me? Pride. <clears throat> and virtuousness in faith listens. Listens to what? Listens to what God wants us to do. How do I know? Observe. I need to be mindful. It's impossible to listen if I'm not mindful. That's why majority of people are not able to listen. Because they are not mindful. And in responsibility, selfishness flees. Like, oh, no, no, this is not with me. No, 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 I need to take care of my life. 
so they're not able to carry on carry on the responsibility pride tyrannizes so in responsibility people smash others and what does virtuousness does collaborates in responsibility for example social responsibility if you are living in a particular country that country is the responsibility of its progress is also up to you no but i'm not a politician but you're a citizen how can you and i help the nations we're living in if that's too much help the communities we're living in if that's too much help the responsibility of the progress of the people whom are li we are living with no 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 but that's their problem no 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 it's our problem of course we're not going to enforce anything but what is my my part my responsibility in it the selfish person washes their hand and say not with me this is not mine Pride tyrannizes, virtuousness collaborates. In the pains of others, selfishness forgets. Easy. We forget every day. There are levels of selfishness. How often I go buy things that are not necessarily needed and then I forget that that money I could have used to give to people who are in greater need than myself. I forget. When I do my math, I think of my immediate needs, my superfluous needs, and I forget about the people who have zero, have nothing, they're miserable. I forget that selfish. But when it is, it's Christmas. I need my, my things. Yeah, but you and the whole world. But I work. They don't work. Yeah, maybe they can't work. What about the refugees? What about the people? You don't need to go far. Wherever we are. Sometimes the person who works in our house... People who are at work, we don't know what they are going through. People have debts that are killing them. Financial debts. And it's killing them. Why not start a campaign to help them out? Oh, but they've spent. Well, but how they did it, it's not us, on us to judge. But we can't forget people's needs, the pain of others. Like that lady. You know, just to give us a touch of balance, one day before one of the Spiritist Symposium, I think it was before the second Spiritist Symposium, I had to, to do my, you know, go for a manicure. And I was divided inside of me. Man, I have so much thing, so many things to do to prepare for this symposium. And I'm going to spend time, you know, in a nail salon. But then I said, you know, uh, that's self-love. I need to do it to be presentable, nice and neat. Come on. And then I pray, said, God, I'm going to use this time and this money for this now out of this intention. Okay. Bless, please bless me in this excursion. And I was there in the nail salon. I sat down and I was paying attention to the lady who was seated next to me. Because who is this person? They are not slaves. They are not our employees. Even if they were, like, who is she? I'm not going to ask because it may be too much. But I was thinking good things about her. Like, you know. She's so nice, she's talking to me, and she's being careful. 
And then she started asking me questions. And then, well, what do you do? Where do you work? Blah, blah, blah. And then the minute I talked about neuroscience, psychology, she's like, oh, let me tell you my story. And I said, sure, please, I'm all ears. And then she said, my brother recently killed himself. Killed himself because he had the back pain because he was a constructor, he had a back pain, and he had to go through surgery. He was married, had children. He couldn't go back to work right away, and then he became addicted to opioids, which is a crisis in the United States. And through the addiction, he went through uh, problems with anxiety, depression, so he started taking other types of medication. He couldn't go back to work. So he was becoming useless, and the bills were just increasing. Dum, 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 dum. To the point that his relationship with his wife became so stressed out. Because he wasn't on his best condition. His wife, they were concerned about the bills. He was the provider of the family. And then... One day they had an argument. She took the kids, brought them to uh, the parent, her parents' home, left him alone. When she came back, he killed himself. He had already killed himself. He took the whole medication. And this lady who was doing my nails, she said, Vanessa. Why did we wait for that tragedy to happen? Because after that, all those people who were demanding the payments for the bills, they excused the family out of mercy. Wonderful. But you know, how about creating a social network that is more merciful on occasions like this. So you see how our society is still fragile, has a lot of gaps in our social system. Selfishness and pride are still leading it to the point that if you are not making up to lead that way, you're out and you're gonna be out big time. The system, smashes you so this man God bless him bless his heart whatever he is what a hard situation it doesn't justify we're not gonna judge but this is selfishness forgetting the pain of others and pride condemning the pain of others People think, oh, of course, that person is going through this because of that and that and the other. Pride, thinking that we're better. You see? Like, for example, you see a homeless. And people attempt to say, oh, but they don't need that much. But, and the Spirit say, it's not on you. It's not on you to say, I'm not going to help because they should know better. We need to help in some way, be efficient. Like we stopped nearby a homeless and we asked, what do you need the most? He said, I have a lot of clothes that people donate to me. What I need the most, food, period. I'm not gonna take him and put him in my house because he doesn't want it, he wants to be free. But you need food, that's what we're gonna help. But Vanessa, what about, I don't know, the next step only God knows. Right now, food. So that's the balance of when we need to take care of ourselves and we meet the needs of people. So it was good because when I talked to this lady, I learned that Jesus was right. When I love myself, I'm able to love others. I was there to take care of a need of self-love for me 
it was needed. And then I found the need of that lady. And we could pray, and we prayed that the Spirit sat about. But the Spirit came and communicated and showed. And the mentor said, he has many, uh, <clears throat> many um, points that will tell that he's somewhat excused in his action. Let's pray for him. And to date, whenever we remember, we're like, God bless whatever he is. If I were on his shoes, I don't know. But Im imagine the pain of the wife, the children, the sister. How devastating it is. And in study, selfishness pretends to know. It's not open to know more. How many people we study together spiritism and they're like, I, I already know it. I already, already studied it. Well, let's try it again and revisit it. Maybe there's something else. Pride doesn't care to know. So the proud one says, ah, why bother with that? And virtuousness always learns in order to do what is best. So here we have friends Virtuousness can faithfully filter divine inspiration. Because when we are open to learn always, and in the best of our ability, the spirit mentors, the spirits that come and deliver the message, they will have open doors to deliver the whole package, not half of it. Tonight, we are being asked to go beyond what we know this far. We know how to be selfish. That is a 10 for us. Proud Oscar. We got the award. I mean, we say humanity, myself. But virtuousness? Who wants to be A plus with honor? Me, me too, me three, me four, yay. We want to be virtuous. So talking about virtues, Ben Franklin, 20 years of age. Shall we work more on this? A list of virtues. Let us contemplate. Beautiful virtues. Because as I think, I co-create, I attract, and I'm like, oh, when I become super patient, oh, people are going to say A, B, C, D, Z, and I'll be like, begin again. Huh? Yeah, it's okay. Go over. Go all the way to the beginning of the alphabet, right? And what else? We say kindness. S kindness is beautiful when everybody's kind, but kindness is prettier when no one is kind. The contrast makes it more special. When people come brutal, and we're like, do this for me. And we're like, sure, sir. My pleasure. Come on, hurry up. Hurry up. Like, sure. I will, with a smile. And when we're tolerant, People come and like, I don't like God. I don't like this thing about Jesus. Okay, no problem. And that's fine. And we're like, okay, you're entitled to your thought, to your feeling. That's how we feel. 
Can you imagine ourselves there? Super virtuous. Beautiful. How does it feel? Light, as if we're flying. Do you believe you can fly? We were singing yesterday. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky of virtues. Think about it every night and day. But do you think about it every night and day? Being virtuous. Hmm? No. So now we do. Think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. Meaning working on it. Making effort and repeating it. I believe I can fly high, virtues. I believe I can touch the sky of virtues. Think about it every night and day. I do at 11 p.m. every day, thinking about ourselves already there, working on it, renouncing our egos and saying, it's okay, we're gonna make it, we're gonna begin anew, I made a mistake, but I forgive myself. And spread our wings, spread means like effort, and fly away, work on it. Right, friends? So let me say hi to the friends. Teresa Catapano, how are you? Karina Lissi, how are you? Seisa. Adriana Sanches, Lu Nicoliello, how are you? Cynthia Peoples, Larissa Santos, how are you? Raquel Baquesh, Léa Severo, Sol Souza, beautiful soul. Thank you for the quote on Joana de Angeles on the Child of God of yesterday. What a teamwork, soul. Loved it. Ad Andrea Torres, Andrea, today I got beautiful message by Adriano from the spirit side of Chicago. He was recalling when we talked, when we were there with Divaldo and Uncle Nielsen, and you guys formed the spirit side of Chicago. And it's 39 years. Good job. And Rosa Maria, how are you? Adilson. Felipe, where are you, Felipe? We miss you, adeus. Teresa Castro, beautiful Teresa. And An Ana Oliveira, how are you, Julija? How are you, Julija? Audi Alves, Rudy, good to be present here in this moment with you, Fred Gouveia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, forever. Cesa, yes, you're right. When we talked to that friend, the manicurist, she felt better. And I tell you the truth, Cesa, I felt much better. Because I felt like, yes, yeah, Jesus was right. This is not selfishness. It's self-love that drives us to really be... Um, to love others more easily. Mara Constantini, I hope I have read it all. I am not opening the other computer here to double check. But friends, three attitudes, selfishness, pride, virtuousness. Virtue, virtue. Let us, we are born to be virtuous. Virtues, are so beautiful. Let us contemplate more often, like as if we were looking at nature, because those works on our virtues will open doors to the communication with the spirits. Tomorrow when we come back, Mamma Mia, the title, Mediumistic Force. Shh, my. Emmanuel is like escalating Yes, he's talking about that item, the moral influence of mediums. And he's saying, above all things, huh? <clears throat> 
mediums that only produce phenomena are worthless. Phenomena that only establish convictions are worthless. Life and time require work and improvement, progress and refinement. Mediumship, as much as physical vision, represents a neutral force from the point of view of morality. The importance and meaning it can acquire depends on the direction given to it. Teaser for when we come back tomorrow. Where's the strength of mediumship? Where does it rely upon? What is it? Emina is going to tell us tomorrow. Let us come back, keep working on it, and be ever more diligent on the search of the fulfillment of our growth through the cultivation of virtues. Big hug, and I know Kara Correa is with us, okay? Big hug to all of you, much gratitude, and until tomorrow.